Good morning, and welcome to worship this morning here at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Hubbard Lake, Michigan. Um, it is a pleasure to be able to gather with you on this Sunday morning, and uh, this is not just any Sunday, it is the, the first Sunday in the season of Lent. Uh, the 40 days of Lent began this past Wednesday, which was Ash Wednesday, um, and uh, this is the first Sunday um, in Lent. This morning we're going to be looking at, um, of the three lessons, we're going to be looking at the Old Testament lesson, which is probably a very familiar story to you from the scriptures. Um, it comes from the book of Genesis chapter 22. It deals with, uh, with Abraham and his, his son, Isaac. And uh, so we will be looking at that, uh, that section out of the scriptures this morning for our message. Um, also, um, as people are joining us right now um, from various places, uh, we would love for you to welcome them. Say hello to your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, yes, we are separated by space, um, as you are not able to gather with us in person for worship this morning. Um, however, um, there are other folks that are joining you online right now. So um, welcome them in the name of the Lord. Share the peace of Christ this morning as people are joining. Secondly, um, we would love for you to join in with us just as if you were sitting in a pew here on Sunday morning. Um, and so that means feel free to, to sing out the hymns um, loudly and, and give all praise to God um, just as, um, as you would if you were here in this place. It doesn't matter if you're sitting there at home. I know it might seem kind of weird or goofy to do that, but hey, you're worshiping the Lord, and, and this is a great opportunity for us to be able to not only gather together, but be able to um, have that time of worship um, and also to receive the gifts that God has to give through his word this morning. That's it for our pre-service stuff. We begin with our opening hymn this morning, Oh, that the Lord would guide my ways. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Be sober minded, be watchful. For your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. 
God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. God's word reminds us that when we were slaves of sin, we were free in regard to righteousness. But now, now that we have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the fruit that we get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us then confess our sins to God, who has brought us out of slavery, and promises to lead us to the promised land of heaven. Heavenly Father, we know we are blessed when we remain steadfast under trial, yet we fall prey to the devil's schemes and give in to temptation. We are lured and enticed by our own evil desires, desires that contradict your good and gracious will. For Jesus' sake, forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As Jesus began his ministry, he said, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe. In the gospel as you have repented of your sins believe these words as if Jesus was standing here speaking them to you I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen when he calls to me I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will rescue him and honor him with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church, that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson on this first Sunday in the season of Lent comes from Genesis chapter 22, beginning at the first verse. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac and he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they bo went both of them together. 
And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham w went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord Will Provide, as it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this, and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson this morning comes from the book of James, chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, and believe in the gospel. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Together, let us confess our faith boldly in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Oh Christ. 
mercy and peace be unto you from God our Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Three days, three long, gut-wrenching days during Abraham's life. Three days where he must have been thinking something, something is definitely wrong here. And I think that we can probably all agree with that sentiment, even though we know how the story ends from Genesis chapter 22. We cannot help but read this account in Genesis and think that something is definitely terribly wrong. Wrong for God to command a father to slaughter his son. In fact, some, some might even question what kind of a God would make that sort of a request would request a horrific thing such as that. As we take a step back from the passage and we look at exactly what is taking place and nothing else, something is wrong. How wrong is it? Because of the love in this father-son relationship. I want you to look at what God says here. Take your son, as he's speaking to Abraham, his servant, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love. Abraham loves Isaac, and he should, right? This is his son, the one that he has waited for, the one that he has longed for, the one that he had even as an old man. He no doubt wants to watch his son grow up to become a strong man, to mature as he is the light of his life. But we hear we hear of this love in yet another way between this father and son in the conversation between the two of them. Isaac looks over to his father and says, My father, here is the wood and, and here is the fire, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? In other words, hey dad, we got everything that we need here to have a sacrifice except for the animal for the sacrifice. And Abraham responds in just such a simple way, My son, God will provide. God will provide. And we see this relationship between father and son, between Abraham and Isaac, and it speaks between the love that they had for one another. And in the midst of that love, in the midst of this relationship, we hear God say, Abraham, go sacrifice him. What a blow to the gut. What a horrific thing to have to hear. How could God ask of such a thing? A father here is, is told to sacrifice his son. We hear that and we think something is definitely wrong here. 
Not just from the human perspective, of course, but also from a biblical one, right? I mean, if we recall, God has promised to Abraham that he will be the father of many nations. Remember that? He said that he promises that his offspring will be as numerous as the stars in the heaven and as the sand upon the seashore. And so killing Isaac would be breaking that promise. Something definitely appears to be drastically wrong. Today, as we recall what we see in our own world, we see that there are things that happen to children today that are absolutely horrific. We can't help but think of those things as we recall what happens here in Genesis 22 as Abraham begins to lead his son to the sacrifice. We think about children being murdered by parents, gang violence, Something is definitely wrong here, we think. Little boys and, and little girls being diagnosed with terminal cancer, undergoing intense treatment, losing their hair, giving up their childhood. Something is terribly wrong here. Teen suicide and school shootings, anxiety and depression among young people is on the rise. Parents burying their children Something is definitely wrong here. You know, when Samuel was born, uh, that, that'd be our youngest son, when he was born, he had to be rushed off to the NICU because he was having seizures, and many of you know that, and many of you were praying for him and for our family during that time. And when Melissa and I were told that our son had had a stroke, you know, there was a lot of unknowns for his future at that point. And... Me in particular, and I'm sure the same is true with Melissa, we couldn't help but see that something was wrong in this situation. This is not the way it was supposed to be. And then in addition, when things like that happen, and things like things that I talked about with other children happen, we think, what about God's promises? Right? That's what I was thinking about with Samuel. I think a lot of people think about that when they're dealing with their children and something horrific is happening. Or when anything is horrific, horrific happening to a child, we think, what about God's promises? What about God's promise to never leave or forsake? What about God's promise that he's going to hear our prayers? What about God's promise that he's going to surround you with his grace? You know, when we see these horrific, these horrible things happening to children, when you see your own son and daughter in pain or a grandchild you definitely begin to wonder about the promises of God. Something, something is terribly wrong here. Abraham had something very wrong here also. I think he could probably see that in one respect. He had to travel three days, three days to that mountain, and those must have been some of the most awful and painful days for a father to know what lie ahead for his son. And yet... Even though those three days must have been painful, gut-wrenching, we see in Abraham's words that he had hope. He trusted that God would provide, not only in the words that he speaks to his son, but even as he says to his servants, you stay here, and I and the boy will go up to the mountain, and we will come back to you. It's not, I'm going to come back to you, it's the boy and I are going to come back to you. We will come back to you. Abraham here is trusting that God is going to provide. And he doesn't know how and he doesn't know when, but he's trusting that God is going to provide and he's holding on to the promises of God, the promises that were made to him, that from his son Isaac, there would be a great nation. And he believes that God is going to work out the details, even though he doesn't understand them. He believes that so much so that he goes all the way to the point of raising a knife against his son in sacrifice. Now, perhaps you're skeptical of that. Maybe you think there's no way that Abraham could have known what God was going to do or what was going to happen. You're right in some respects. And yet, we hear from the writer to the book of Hebrews, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, 
Through Isaac, your offspring shall be named. He considered that God was able to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. Did you catch those first two words? By faith. By faith. By faith, Abraham took Isaac up on the mountain. By faith, Abraham traveled for those three days to the mountain. By faith, Abraham was prepared to sacrifice his son. And guess what? God kept his promise. And God provided by sparing Isaac's life. And in a much deeper way, God provided in other means. We see a moment of it uh, in a few different aspects of this account. When Isaac is carrying the wood for his father, the wood that was going to be used for the sacrifice, just as Jesus carried the wood of the cross. Isaac is the only son of Abraham, the one whom he loves, the one and only. And Jesus is the only begotten son of God. The ram is caught in the thicket, the one that God provided as the sacrifice in place of Isaac. Jesus on the cross is our substitute as sacrifice for our sin. Yes, God kept his promise to Abraham. God kept his promise that from his offspring would be a great nation. And from his offspring came Jesus, and he provided to his servant life and salvation. And he provides for you as well. Brothers and sisters in Christ, he always keeps his promises that he has made to you. When everything around you looks so wrong, when everything around you looks so horrible, God provides and keeps his promises that he is with you and that he is for you. One day, if you remember this from the, uh, from the Gospels, uh, but one day Jesus is, is traveling and a messenger comes and approaches Jesus and tells him that one of his closest friends, Lazarus, was very ill and near the point of death. And for some reason, we don't know why, but Jesus waits. Jesus waits two whole days before he finally decides to travel to his dear friend. And when he arrives, Lazarus' sister Martha comes out to meet Jesus and says to him, Lord, if only you would have been here, my brother would not have died. You can hear her words. You can hear her words, Jesus, you weren't here for us. Where were you? Something is wrong here, Lord. Why weren't you here? And Jesus responds to her with a promise. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though you die, will rise again. Martha, do you believe this? He asked her. And Martha confesses that she indeed does. But Jesus doesn't just stop there. He goes on and he meets Mary. And Mary is there in tears as she laments over the death of her brother. Lord, if you would have been here, then my brother would not have died. This time Jesus doesn't have a conversation with Mary. Instead, he simply weeps with her. He weeps. He cries over the death of Lazarus. Now, that might seem maybe a bit odd, although Jesus is human and this is his friend, but he knows what's going to happen. He knew that Lazarus was going to die. He knows that he is going to bring him back from the dead, and yet he weeps. And he shows us something. Jesus shows us that knowing the end of the story doesn't mean that you can't cry during the sad parts, right? Just because you know how the story ends doesn't mean that you can't cry during the horrible, awful, terrible, sad parts of the story. We know that God provides. We know that God keeps his promises in his son, Jesus. And we know that Jesus is with us even when things are so, so terribly wrong. We see God's provision, and we see his promises kept on the cross and kept and fulfilled in the empty tomb. Jesus never leaves you. He never forsakes you. 
He always hears your prayer and he always surrounds you with his grace. And like Abraham, you and I are simply called to believe and trust in the Lord that he will indeed provide. And we still expect to cry. We should expect to cry during those times when things seem horribly wrong. But brothers and sisters, there will come a day when there will be no more tears. When Jesus will return. And he will do for us what we could never do for ourselves. And there will be no more worry about teen suicide, or infant deaths, or childhood cancer, or disease, or anything else for that matter that is sinful. Rather, everything will be right. Everything will be perfect. Until then, we cry at the sad parts. But like Abraham, we know the end of the story. And we trust that God will provide and Jesus will keep his promises. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. During this time, we want to continue to uh, be cheerful in your giving as you have faithfully done so throughout this time of pandemic, being apart from us um, and not being able to be here for in-person worship. Um, we just want to continue to encourage you um, to give um, as a response to everything that God has given to you. And uh, there's a couple ways that you can do that. Um, many of you are aware of those ways, but uh, for those of you that maybe are not aware, you can mail your offering to the church. You can even drop it off throughout the week. Another easy way is you can go to our website and give online. You can do it as a one-time gift. You can set up a recurring gift, whatever you would like to do. It is a very safe and easy process. Or you can text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 989-309-2496, and then just uh, respond to the instructions on your screen. Um, having given our gifts unto the Lord, let us go to our Father in heaven with the singing of our offertory hymn. Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, as we have entered this Lenten season of repentance and renewed devotion, we pray that you would remember us according to your steadfast love and goodness in Christ, and instruct and lead us by your Spirit in your ways, so that we may repent and believe the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you placed the wood of the cross on the back of your only begotten Son, that as the promised offspring of Abram, he might possess the gates of hell. Bless, we pray, his church and those called to preach and teach within her, with the certainty that those gates cannot prevail against them, that in faith they may boldly trample every power of the enemy underfoot. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of lights, from whom every good and perfect gift comes down from heaven above, keep us from being enticed by our own desires to misuse your gifts and sin, and help us to use them rightly in service to you and our neighbor. Bless all of our leaders, 
that they may govern us wisely and justly for the good of this present generation and all those to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most high God, our refuge in every trouble, you have promised to hear when we call to you. We pray that you would command your angels to guard our brothers and sisters in need and all those who suffer in our midst. Keep them from every evil that can befall the body, the mind, and the soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we remember with thanksgiving those before us whom you have brought forth by the word of truth and who now live and reign in your presence with your Son. As you have also brought us forth by that word in baptism, we pray that you would bring us to full maturity by your word, that we too may be gathered with them to your Son on the glorious harvest of the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant to us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. We close this morning with our final hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
for joining us for worship this morning. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we let you go on your way. Um, one is this coming Wednesday and uh, in the following Wednesdays throughout the season of Lent, uh, we are gathering for worship both in person and online at 6 p.m. That's on Wednesdays, our midweek Lenten services um, at 6 p.m., both online and in person. Our theme this year is Return to the Lord. And uh, we are looking at uh, various aspects of the scriptures where we are called to return. And um, this week, I believe, we are looking at returning in prayer. And so we hope that you will join us um, this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. Also, um, I know it seems like it's far away, but it's really right around the corner. Um, Easter will be here before we know it. And um, Dorcas is reaching out to the congregation if you would like to, uh, to help out Dorcas with their Easter egg hunt, we are planning on doing that this year for uh, the children that attend um, that Easter Sunday. Um, if you would like to help out, they are looking for, for candy. And so um, they are looking for bags of individually wrapped pieces of candy. Um, and you can drop those off throughout the week on Sunday morning um, whenever you are um, able to do that. Um, and they thank you for, for helping out um, as they uh, seek to uh, show some, some love and bring some joy to the children in our congregation and uh, even our community. Um, also, um, lastly, I just want to make a reminder to all of you at home that if you are in need of communion, if you would like um, private communion, if you want to come here, if you want me to come to your home, um, please reach out to me. Um, I know some people, and I have some people on my list that I've been kind of doing on a regular basis, but uh, uh, if you are, are desiring that, please make sure that you reach out to me and make me aware of that, and uh, we can set it up for whatever works best for you. Um, that is it for, um, for this morning. Uh, again, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.